Good afternoon, and thank you for coming uh, this afternoon. My name is Susan Miski, and I'm the Associate Vice President of Marketing and Communications here at the college. Um, we really appreciate the great turnout. I know as uh, local and regional media, um, we know that you have a vested interest in the transition of our college and ultimately the success of our students and the success of our institution. So we appreciate your partnership and thank you for coming to support our college. Today, uh, we have Hal Dittmer, who is the chairman of our board of trustees, um, who will speak and then you'll hear from our newly elected president, Don Jackson, and then at the end we will take questions. So there's also a press packet with the media release, uh, President Jackson's bio in there, and the remarks are printed as well. So if you haven't, we can do questions after both of the remarks. So, Hal. Thank you, uh, Susan. And good afternoon to members of the media and to the administration and, uh, and students and friends. Uh, most of all, it's my honor today to officially present to you... Uh, Has left the conference. Someone left the conference. It's to officially present to you Donald Jackson, best known to many of you over the years as Don. Don is the newly elected president of Hastings College. For the record, Don, a 1970 graduate of Hastings College and a for former vice chairman of the Board of Trustees, becomes the 16th president of Hastings College. You will hear from Don in a moment, and we will be both be happy to answer your questions. But first, let me briefly fill you in on recent events that led to the board's unanimous election of Don to succeed Dennis Trotter as president. By now, you have all read the college news release announcing the unforeseen leadership transition. For those of you who are hearing about this for the first time, Dennis, for whom we have great admiration and effect and respect, recently advised us that he had decided to step down. The board reluctantly accepted Dennis's resignation and immediately turned our attention to succession. We have great momentum at the college, great things are going on and happening, and we were eager to ensure that that momentum and good news continued. As you may recall, the search process that led to Dennis Trotter's election in 2011 was exhaustive, included more than 100 candidates, and spanned many months. It was also a tremendous learning experience for the board and the campus community. And while evaluating all of our options, it was clear that, that after Dennis resigned, it was clear that when, when it was clear that Dennis would be leaving, several board members independently asked if there was a candidate in the Hastings College family who embraced the admission, grasped the issues that Dennis had so successfully identified and had the experience to ascend to the presidency. I speak for the entire board when I tell you that it did not take too long for us to realize that there was no need to outsource a presidential search, given the fact that we had a superb internal candidate, the right candidate here on campus in the form of Don Jackson. We were convinced that we needed to make the case to Don, who had been serving as Vice President of Advancement after a long and successful and distinguished career as Global Chief Operating Officer of Easter Seals. Don was well aware of the critical issues and important issues facing all of higher education, as well as Hastings College and the need to move quickly to minimize the impact of a sudden transi transition of this magnitude would have on the college. So before I ask Don to speak, let me ex share a few facts about Don that will help explain why the Board of Trustees has so much confidence in him. 
after <clears throat> selling his company, this company he founded in 1976, Rehabilitation Systems, Inc., physical therapy-oriented company, to a public company, Don became chief operating officer of Easter Seals, which is a global nonprofit, as all of you know. He held the number two role there, Easter Seals being the ninth largest nonprofit in the United States for over 21 years. The year before Don retired, Easter Seals exceeded $1.3 billion in annual revenues. Easter Seals is an ex extraordinarily complex organization with more than 70 domestic and three international global affiliates. Don's scope of responsibility at Easter Seals included managing all domestic and global affiliate relationships as well as leading Easter Seals fundraising enterprise, which I might point out raised $190 million last year. So Don retired from Easter Seals in June of 2012. Prior to President Trotter asking Don to become Hastings College's Vice President of Advancement, Many of you know that Don had been an active and involved member of the Board of Trustees at Hastings College, including serving as Vice Chair of the College and of the Foundation Board of Directors. Following Bobby Gotch's passing last summer, uh, I'm sorry, a, a year ago last summer, Don, as an unpaid volunteer, personally led the fundraising campaign, the Bobby Gotch Difference Makers campaign, committing typically 15, 20 hours a week to that campaign. And this is the reason we're able to announce last October that the Bobby Gotch Difference Makers campaign had raised over $9 million and we got more to go. Don knows our issues from the inside out He's a proven leader. He leads by example. He deeply cares about Hastings College, as all board members, do, all of the board members that I know do. We're incredibly fortunate and deeply grateful that Don and his wife Bev supported our decision to ask him to be the new president of Hastings College. So now it's my distinct honor and pleasure to, for the first time, introduce. President Donald Jackson. Don? Before I start my prepared remarks, let me just say that uh, I did not expect to be in this position today. Uh, this is uh, sudden for me as well, as it is for everyone. Uh, but I have to say uh, to Hal and to the Board of Trustees, I truly thank you. I'm honored and humbled to have been asked by the Board of Trustees to serve as the president of Hastings College. I have to start out by saying I'm enthusiastic about the future of the college. And uh, I'm confident we can move through this period of transition and uh, move quickly through it to get where we need to be in moving the college forward. Before I go further though, I first want to thank uh, President Trotter for his outstanding service to the college. Dennis and I work together both in my role as a trustee and in my, as, in my role as vice president for advancement. Dennis worked hard to assure the success of the college and his work will play a significant role in guiding our future. Growing up in Cambridge, Nebraska in the mid-1960s, one of my dreams was to attend Hastings College. And after attending McCook Junior College for two years, that dream came true when I received a call from Dr. Lynn Farrell, also known as Doc Farrell, who at the time was Hastings College's 
athletic director and head basketball coach. Doc Farrell offered me a scholarship to be the trainer, the student trainer for all sports. And uh, I might add he was in a bit of a bind because our longtime athletic director, uh, the doctor, Reverend Skip Udlock, had uh, decided to take a two-year sabbatical and so there was no one else to serve in that role. I'll never be able to repay my debt to Hastings College or to Lynn Farrell. My experience as a student here in Hastings, Nebraska shaped my future in so many ways it would be impossible to recount them all. I would be remiss at this point if I didn't also mention Professor Gilbert Adrian. Between Professor Adrian and Doc Farrell, I discovered that I could not only be a good student, but that I could achieve at a much higher level than I ever dreamt possible. That discovery, along with my recommitment to my Christian faith while I was a student at Hastings College, shaped my future for the next 40 plus years of my life. Returning to Hastings College and to Hastings, Nebraska is coming home for me. I feel truly blessed to have this opportunity. That said, it's a challenging time for Hastings College. There's competition across the state and across the region for students. That said, students at Hastings College are continuing to experience the same opportunities I had more than 40 years ago. We have many examples of their success. It is critically important that every student at Hastings College have that same opportunity. It has to become part of our brand promise. If you come to Hastings College and you graduate, we promise you we'll prepare you for the next phase of your life, whether that's graduate school or work. I have seen that my experience from over 40 years ago is very similar to students' experience today on campus. As a trustee and as a member of the leadership team, I continue to see both faculty and staff invest in our students. They continually take an interest in our students' success and they help students discover their true potential. It's truly an impressive process. I believe it's what makes Hastings College different. I know I benefited from it as, as a student here and now as president. I hope to continue that legacy for our students for as long as I'm here. Thank you very much. How would you like to come up? We'll take any questions now that you may have. Yes. Uh, Mr. Jackson, now that you're president of Hastings College, what is your vision for this institution and where do you plan to take it? We've been working on that actually for several months, working on a vision for the college and some of the planks of that vision. There's some important pieces of who we are and what, we're, what, we're, what we need to do that we need to take care of in order to achieve it. So my essence, my vision, the essence of my vision is exactly as I stated, the brand promise. Every student that comes here, if they graduate, we will prepare them for the next phase of their life, whether it's graduate school, or work. And I, I put the two together because I think one of the issues in higher education these days is so many students are graduating and they can't find work. We need to make that a key plank of who we are and offer an opportunity for every student that leaves here. And we can do this. Uh, we have the ability to do it. And we actually are well along in our plans for how to do it. And we're actually doing a pretty good job right now in many respects with that. But we need to make it an institutional commitment that we can do that for all. So if there's a vision that's a global vision, that would be it, to be able to do that for all students. There are a lot of pieces to get there. This question's for Hal. You were talking about the unforeseen 
you're seeing leadership transition. Is there anything that, uh, any indication, any reasons President Trotter gave you as to why he decided to resign? Well, the, we're not sure yet is the honest answer, but at the same time, uh, we were very, very appreciative of what Dennis did when he was here. So we respect Dennis very much and, uh, and appreciated his contributions. There were some differences in philosophy, but uh, uh, not so major that we thought it would lead to uh, this, this transition. So. Chuck, you had also mentioned that this, uh, you both mentioned that this was rather such, and I think we all agree we were scrambling a little bit with all this. Um, can you shed on any, any light on what the timeline was on this? Was this something that happened over the weekend? Can you shed any light on that at all? Uh, we can shed this much light. Uh, the uh, board meeting was week before last, and there were discussions that took place at that time. Those discussions continued on into the last week, and then it became clear that Dennis wanted to resign. So what specific day did uh, Dr. Carter offer his resignation then? It was February 1st was the, it was the official day. I'd have to look at my calendar, but uh, the exact day, uh, it was several days later. I don't, I, don't, I don't recall the exact day. It was at the end, toward the end of last week. Yeah, it, was, uh, it was early, uh, February 1st was Friday, so it was really the same board meeting when you accepted <coughs> resignation. And then that's, that's actually, the official resignation was February 1st, and we anticipated it a few days earlier. We called the board meeting in anticipation of that, and so actually it was February 1st, technically. So the official resignation and hiring Mr. Jackson were right. actually the same day? Yes, they were, but, but there was anticipation there was Anticipation of, the, uh, of that, that was, was, was several days. Yeah. yeah exactly. I'm, all right. You talked about philosophical differences. I don't know if you can maybe give some general outline Maybe where some of those lay. I don't know, but with the fundraising, you know, capital improvements or uh, curriculum, I, I don't know. What there, there, there was agreement on the vision and the direction for the college. Everybody uh, signed on to that. We're still signed on to that. Some of the methods of getting there, there was some philosophical differences in that. We'll just leave it at that for now. Denver, I guess, question, what does this cost the college uh, as far as severance? I'm sure I mean, this was a long process, and Dennis Trotter was going to be here for the long haul. Is this going to cost the college a lot? No, it is not. Uh, the terms of Dennis's contract uh, are, are going to be honored, and uh, it's a, not a significant uh, cost to the college. So you say the terms of the contract, how long did his contract run for? This, his contract was through uh, this, uh, this academic year, which was through uh, uh, end of May. And, but there was an agreement that in the event that he were to leave, there would be a severance pay, and that is being honored. And so he'll be paid through the month of May, his, his salary? Yes, uh, and I'd like to, I'd prefer not to get into the specifics of all of that, but there will be some severance beyond that period of time, which was in his contract, and we're going to honor that contract. President Jackson, kind of take us through your thought process when they kind of offered this job to you. You said you weren't expecting this this morning. Mm -hmm. You know, was this a tough decision for you? I mean, did you kind of know you were going to take it all already? Kind of take us through your own thought process. There. So I've been part of the cabinet for the last four months. I was part of the board. Of, I was a member of the board of trustees, the meeting prior to my joining the cabinet, which was last April. So I've been part of the process uh, for all the time that, that President Trotter has been here. I actually served on the search committee 
And so the, so I've been a bit of an insider, if you will, to um, both the thinkings of the board and the thinkings of the uh, administration and how that was going. And so uh, I've been part of developing a plan to prepare for the board, for the board meeting. And so I can tell you that my, my hope uh, from the board meeting was that the, that the plan would be favorably reviewed and that we'd find a way to work with the board to get where we need to go for the vision of the school. Um, so then coming into this situation, I wasn't completely surprised. It's just that um, I came here to lead the fundraising team and I might add, you know, I really enjoy doing that and, you know, we need to keep our emphasis on that and move forward just as aggressively as we have been. But when you get a call saying, here's our situation, will you consider this? Um, sure, I had to take a deep breath, but it's the reason I'm here at all is because I'm here to, to repay my debt to this organization that did so much for me, and I care about it that deeply. And I would not want to see this organization struggle through a period of transition if we could minimize that in any way. And at the same time, I feel like it's really important to have leadership in place and move forward. If we go into a transition thing or an interim situation, I didn't feel that that was something that would be good for me. So I, I felt like we needed to make a commitment to move forward and do so together. So what we're doing now is really trying to be clear to everyone uh, We've made a decision for moving forward. I've personally made a huge decision. My wife, Bev, is uh, supporting that decision in a big way and uh, will, will be part of my life here. So uh, we're very pleased with that and, and glad we're in a position to do it. It's just, for me, it's a timing thing, but it, is, it was a big decision. May I add to, to that answer if I could possibly? Uh, organizations, Colleges, businesses, nonprofits go through phases. And different leaders are right for the different phases. Dr. Dudley was a terrific president for the phase of this institution that he led it. Dennis was the right person at the right time to identify issues, put them in context of Nebraska higher education. And frankly, right now, it's time for an operations-oriented a business-oriented executive with a lot of experience like Don to carry that vision forward. Much of that vision was identified by Dennis. So that's, Don's the right person for the right time. If we'd have gone out for a search, I don't know how we would have specified somebody better. Um, I understand that there were meetings held with faculty and staff and students this morning, uh, earlier today. Uh, regarding this announcement, what kind of reaction did you receive from them? I know it's been very preliminary, but any reaction you've received so far? Well, we've had some, some really good and frank discussions and, you know, some tough questions just like we have here. Um, and uh, I think uh, we had a good dialogue. Hopefully the, stu the faculty and the staff uh, left at least being informed and understanding more clearly uh, what the situation was and our best response at what we were doing about it. Uh, I think that the same with the students. And so I would characterize the, the dialogue we had as thoughtful. I think it was, uh, we, we were able to share a message that they needed to hear and do it on a timely basis so they were able to be a part of the process as, a part, as opposed to learning it secondhand. And we felt that that was the most important thing in respect for our students, for our faculty and our staff, is that they have a chance to talk with us at the time this was happening as opposed to explaining it later. Um, so those dialogues will continue as we go along, even through this day. And um, you know, I'm sure they'll continue to be fruitful, but I would certainly characterize them as fruitful. President Trotter didn't have a PhD, obviously that's not a huge deal, but I guess for you, don't have a PhD, how do you see yourself leading this institution, increasing the enrollment as you've seen it go down uh, the last few years? 
Well, there, there's a lot of aspects to leading an organization, and so I've had a fair degree of success at that, and, and the way that you do that is, uh, and I've said this earlier today, you, you have people on your team who are better at doing the things that you need to do than you could do yourself. And that's certainly my philosophy. On the <coughs> academic side, uh, Dr. Gary Johnson is here today and is our academic dean, and I appreciate him being present for this press conference. Uh, we're gonna have to work very closely together and I've got a lot to learn, frankly, and, uh, and I'm ready to do that. Uh, we've made great strides in where we're proceeding on the academic side, and I think we'll continue to do that and I've made sure that Gary and our entire team knows they have my support in moving forward. But uh, we can't look back, we can't say, oh, you know, it was better in the old days. We're on a path to move forward and that's what we're gonna do. We have some challenges, you mentioned admissions. Um, you know, uh, I don't think that, we're, that, that the organization is broken. I think we have areas we need to improve. And so we've been working hard at that over the last few months and, and even longer. And we've had good dialogue even at the board level with our leadership team about that. And we're putting plans in place to move forward there. But that's very important. On the advancement side, I think we're, we're moving along pretty well. We can't afford to let that fall back either. That's a very good question. Am I going to continue with my advancement duties? Well, at the present time, I certainly will. And, uh, you know, at, at least for a period of time, I'll be officing here in this building where, where our foundation team is located. And then, you know, as we get through this transition, I'll probably have two offices on campus for a while. But, you know, uh, the advancement team knows me well enough to know that, you know, we're gonna keep moving along. We talked about that this morning, and I'm very excited about the team that we have and the leadership they're sh they've been showing, and I have no doubts that that will continue really well. We will have more leadership there at some point in time. That's great, thanks for your question. I think the last thing is we will have interview opportunities with both Hal and Don, and we also have Allison Kern. So Allison Kern's a senior um, here at Hastings College, and she's the vice president of our student association. So thank you again uh, for coming, and thank you for your interest and your interest in, in Hastings College success. Thanks.